Okay, today we will be talking about the way to make out of one of these servos a constantly rotating servo and at the same time we gonna be placing the potentiometer outside of the servo like in this case usually whenever one of my servos go, goes south I try to recover and recycle any possible part that I can possibly put my hands on. I will not be going too deep into the procedure because I believe that there is just too many people that have placed videos showing how this is done. But I will make it simple and easy. Anyway, I will be opening this servo. So, anyway, there is two important aspects that need to be taken care of. The first one, usually servos have a stopping point. And in this case, if you look at it right here, you can see the place where the servo will the, where the gear will crash against itself. And that needs to be cut out with an exacto knife. Okay, once you cut out that with exacto knife, this guy will be capable to rotate fully in either or direction. And now we can open this, and it is as simple as just cutting out these three wires that are right here. It is pretty important of paramount important importancy to make sure that you discriminate which one is the center wire that is a left a right and a center the center is called the wiper and that one is the one that you really need to make sure that you don't lose so you want to use a color you want to use so you know some nail polish whatever it is that you want to use in order to to make sure that you are capable to find that one later on Usually, as you can see right here, I cut a hole in the side of the servo and I pull out my three wires and uh, I discriminate which one is the one that is in the center. In this specific case, the, ser the color of, this, of the wire that goes out of the servo is a, is a blue color and uh, that is the one that goes to the center of the potentiometer, the wiper. Once you pull these three wires out, I do not recommend in the cheapy cheapy, you know, this dollar eighty cents servos, I do not recommend to remove the potentiometer out of there. Because the potentiometer is part of the assembly that hold on the the main gear in place. So due to the fact that they are dirt cheap and if you have other servo you can literally harvest another another potentiometer out of a servo there is not a good reason to dismantle the one that you're going to be using for the purpose well and uh, continuing with the example about the continuous rotating servo we have right here an example of a servo that has been modified I have this set in the center and the, and the servo is rotating constantly. And we take this this potentiometer that has been set outside of the servo it is possible to remove the, the arm and put a gear right here in the same way that it was mounted on the on the small gimbal. So it is also important to consider the possibility that you may have to change these two uninverted because as you mount this guy onto the onto the assembly of the gimbal there is a possibility that the gear is rotating in the opposite direction and instead of you going in one direction 
and as the gearing moves getting satisfied until it is stopped what it happens is that it, it just keep going as a steady full speed until it breaks the gear or breaks the potentiometer so it is important to understand that aspect of the procedure See? Okay, center one more time Finally, we're going to be talking about the way that this thing is assembled. We already talked about <coughs> the servo. We are talking about removing the potentiometer out of the servo and putting it externally. And we talk about the procedure of uh, making sure that the lacking position of the, la of the big gear is removed so this guy can rotate freely. Perhaps one of the most important aspects, and I'm gonna show this, I have one of the really really inexpensive servo drivers from eBay. And uh, basically what I am using it is to test and make sure before I mount these into my plane that whenever I tell this guy to go to the right or to the left that it gets satisfied that it is stopped automatically. Okay. Uh, basically you can see I move it right there and it goes to the point that it stops. If it stops, it is actually a really good assemble. If for some reason I try to go to the right or to the left and the guy keep going straight forward, then we have a problem. And it, that will mean that the cables have to be swapped. As you can see right there, this is one of the smallest potentiometers available. And it was removed out of a servo. A damaged servo that is still have a good potentiometer. I just remove it and I place it right there. Okay. Uh, perhaps one of the most important aspects of this type of assemble is that you have the opportunity to set this guy in the center. I believe this is the, the gear for the center. This is the point. It goes to the center. And when it's in the center, if for some reason you look at your camera and your camera is not pointing to the center, it is very easy to just turn around over here and move this gear over here manually because it is just inserted in a piece of metal right there. Kind of a custom job, but it does, the, it, it does a really, really good job. So which way I need to move it? I need to move it towards me, and in this case away from me. So I will just move this a little bit. Opposite direction, and uh, he will be dead center right there. So now it will be in the, in the center, into the center position. Okay. Yep, I am pretty satisfied with this. So there you have it, if I go to the next two positions I can actually get this guy to turn 180 degrees, I can look behind me, I probably can go 180, uh, 360, but it is not my desire, it is not my desire. To strain any kind of damage into my potentiometer. Uh, as you may see in the future in the, in the videos I will show that this this gimbal only weights 50 grams which is an unbelievable small amount of weight. It's a decent gimbal and if you have a good platform well designed you will have a really good pan only gimbal.